Hello, dear students. I hope you are all doing great. Today, we are going to do a review and reinforcement. Where in this review, we are going to focus on first, communication. In communication, we are going to deal with ways of introducing oneself and asking about someone. This is, of course, something that you did last year. But again, Today, we're going to repeat it. Number two, grammar. In this grammar section, we're going to target the verb to be in the present simple, the use and for. Number three, vocabulary. In vocabulary, we're going to do regular and irregular plurals. Number four, reading comprehension. And the last one, writing. So, let's get started. Communication. Of course, we're going to talk about how to introduce oneself. There are different exchanges we can use to say hello. For example, Hello, my name is Hussein. What's yours? Or, Hi, my name is Hussein. What about you? Or, Nice to meet you. Nice to know you. Glad to know you. I'm very happy to meet you. All we can say how do you do? So, when, you, when we meet a person for the first time, these are the statements we can use in order to introduce ourselves, right? Now, let's move to practice. I want you to fill in the gaps with the appropriate expression. Here we have, this is a short dialogue between Susan and Mehdi. Hello, my name is Susan. My name is Mehdi. Mehdi, how do you do? Susan, this is Sarah. Sarah, nice to meet you too. Right, so from the expressions I have explained, I want you to fill in these, the gap. For example, number one. Hello, my name is Susan. As you can see, Susan has asked Mehdi a question, and Mehdi's answer is, my name is Mehdi. So what is the question? Yes? That's right. What's your name? Right? Great. That's fine. Number two. Sarah has said something, and the answer to which is, how do you do? What did she say? Yes? Great! How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Right? Susan, this is Sarah. Sarah, nice to meet you. Now when someone tells you nice to meet you, what is the answer? It's a yes? Nice to meet you too. Exactly. So nice to meet you, nice to meet you too. Now let me repeat. Susan, hello, my name's Susan. What's your name? My name is Mehdi. How do you do? How do you do? Sarah. Mehdi. This is Sarah. Mehdi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Now, let me sum up what we have done up to the time being. When we introduce someone, we use statements like, I'm Hiba, for example. I'm Hiba. I'm Robert. I'm David. Whatever. Your name. My name is Mehdi, but call me Midu, right? Call me Midu. Midu is a nickname. I'm sure that you know what a nickname means, right? Let me introduce myself. I'm David, for example. We can say also, you can call me Barb. I'm from England. So these are ways of introducing oneself. This is how 
you can introduce yourself. And of course, there are other statements. These are just examples. How to introduce someone, right? This is Brian from Canada. Suppose that you are with your friend, right? And you want to introduce your friend to another person, okay? This is Brian from Canada. Or I can say, oh, well, let me introduce Ella. She's a doctor, right? Let me introduce Ella. She's a doctor, okay? Or we can say, uh, glad to present to you Robert, right? So these are different ways we can use in order to introduce someone. Now, how to ask about someone, right? For example, how are you doing? Or how's everything? Or are you a student? Or where are you from? Of course, there are other statements like, how's life treating you, right? I hope everything is good with you. So these are different statements, of course, this is something that you did last year, but this year, of course, we are going to repeat that. Now, let's move to a grammar review. In this review, we are going to target the simple present. Simple present of? Of to be. As you know, the verb to be is one of the most important verbs in the English language. It is an irregular verb in almost all of its forms. In the simple present tense, to be is conjugated as follows. Now here, as you can see in these columns, in the affirmative form, short form, am, um, your, his, She's, it's, we're, you're, there. The full form is as follows. I am, you are, he is, she is, it is, we are, you are, they are. And the negative form, I'm not, you're not, she's not. It's not, we are not, you are not, they are not. In the negative form, full form, I am not, you are not, he is not, she is not, it is not, we are not, you are not, and they are not. And the interrogative form, am I, are you, is he, is she, is it, are we, are you, and are they? So, this is the form of the verb to be. Now, let's move to some examples. Look at this dialogue between Sam and Steve, in which we focus on to be. Sam, is Michael Jackson English? No, he isn't. He's American. What about Maria Carre? Is she American too? Yes, she is. She is American. Are Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie French? No, they aren't. They are American. As you can see here, we have the use of the verb to be in all its forms. Singular, plural, negative, and interrogative. The use of the present simple of to be. Number one, the principal use of the simple present is to refer to an action or event that takes place habitually, but with the verb to be, the simple present tense also refers to a fact, reality, or a general truth. For example, Morocco is in Africa. Of course. My teachers are helpful. The second case, the verb to be 
in the simple present can also be used to refer to something that is true. At the present time. For example, it is so hot today. Or, I'm student. Okay, now let's move to some practice. What can you see in this slide? Yes, it's a picture. A picture of, yes, Cristiano Ronaldo. Right. Now here in this picture, Cristiano Ronaldo is carrying, is holding his twins. Now look at the paragraph. I want you to read this paragraph and complete it with the correct form of to be. Right? Simple. Let's do it together. Hello. My name, Cristiano Ronaldo. I, Portuguese. I, a father to twins. Their names, Eva and Matteo. They, so cute, and I, like them, and I love them a lot. Okay, number one, my name, exactly, my name is Cristiano Ronaldo. Can't say my name are right now. My name is. I am Portuguese. I am a father to twins. Their names. Now look here, plural. Their names. Their names is Eva and Matteo. No, it's not. Their names. Yes, are exactly, and they are. So cute, and I love them a lot. I hope it's clear, right? Now, we're going to move to something different. Vocabulary. In this vocabulary lesson and review, mind you, this is a review, right? We are going to see how we formulate the irregular and the regular plural forms. Let's start with the regular plural forms. As a rule, we add an S to the end of the word. For example, singular, a table, plural of table, of course, tables. Yeah, that's right. A cat, cats, an S. A car, cars. A door, Doors, a window, windows, a computer, computers, a chair, chairs. So, as you have noticed, S, 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 etc. Irregular plurals, it's different. Now look at these words, child, man, woman, food, tooth, Goose, fish, sheep. What is the plural form of child? Childs? No, it's not childs. Sorry. Children. Men. Men, right? A here, E here. Women. Women, right? Mind you, pronunciation. Women, not women, no. Woman for the singular form. Women, women, right. Food, plural form of food. Yes, that's right, feet. And what is this? Tooth, plural, teeth, yes. Goose, geese, fish, does not change, fish, it remains the same, it's like sheep, sheep, mouse, mice, 
So these are called irregular plural forms because they do not take an S. They have different forms. Some rules. Now here, with the verbs that end in S or double S or CH or SH or X or L, we add ES. For example, bus, buses, watch, watches, box, boxes, brush, brushes. Right? What about this one? F or FE, we add what? V, E, S. Remember, the F is dropped. Example, knife, knives. Life, lives. Leaf, leaves. Wife, wives. Right? I guess that the rule is clear, right? So let me repeat. F or FE, knife, knives. Life, lives. Leaf, leaves. Wife and wives. Now here, the third category. Now here we have consonant. B, C, D, etc. These are consonants, right? Now, a consonant before Y, the Y changes into I, E, S. For example, family, families. Look, consonant and Y. Family, families. Story, story, stories, right, are consonant. Lady, ladies, right, lady, consonant before Y. Baby, babies, again, here, consonant. And of course, we drop the consonant and we substitute it with I, E, S. Right, here, vowel. When we say, when we talk about vowel, we mean this. A, E, I, O, and of course, U. Vowel, semi-vowel. Anyway, this is something different. So, a vowel before Y, we add an S. For example, toy, vowel, we just add S, toys. Boy, just add S, boys. Play, just add S. I guess it's clear. I'm going to repeat. Regular verb, regular plural forms, we add an S. Irregular plural forms, we have a number of irregular plural forms. S, double S, C, H, S, H, X, or O. We add E, S. F, or if, F, E, we add V, E, S. Consonants before the Y, we, of course, change it into I, E, S. And vowel before the, vo before the Y, we add an S. Some practice. Now show me that you have understood. Look at these, these sentences. Put the words between brackets in the correct form. Let's think about the first one. Newborn babies do not have tooth. Now here we need the plural form of tooth. What is the plural of tooth? Yeah, yes, exactly. It's teeth. That's right. Now here, mouse, like cheese. Did you know that, ma that mice like cheese? Yes, I have given you the answer. Mice like cheese. Mice. Child shouldn't eat sweets. Do we say child shouldn't eat sweets? Children, because it's plural form here. Yes, exactly. Now here, how many police women are there in your town? Now here, 
How many? Please. Women are. Do we say women? No. How, how many? Please. Women. Women. Please. Women. And number five. My neighbor sells beautiful sheep in his farm. And I have said that it is, of course, sheep does not change. So it is sheep. Excellent, guys. Now we're going to move to reading comprehension. In this reading comprehension text, we're going to talk about someone. Stephen. Stephen is a boy. He's from Scotland. And he's going to tell us about his, himself, about his life. Stephen enjoys playing sport and, you know, he does a lot of activities. When he does those, his favorite activities, he loves staying in the bathtub. What is a bathtub? Exactly. This is the bathtub, right? And he also likes, you know, having a, a shower. Not a shower? When we play sports, when we do some activities, we go home and sometimes when we get up or we, when we, go, we want to go to bed, we, of course, have a shower, right? This is a shower. Now, this is the text. Let's have a look at the text. Let me read it. My name is Stephen. I'm 13 years old and I'm from Dundee in Scotland. I live in a beautiful big farm about 80 kilometers from Edinburgh. Dundee is a small town, but I love living here because there are always many interesting things to do. I usually get up at seven o'clock in the morning. While my mother prepares breakfast, my dad feeds the animals and I have a quick shower, but sometimes when it's freezing, I stay in the bathtub more than 30 minutes. <laughs> I have classes in the morning from nine to midday. My favorite subjects are science and art. Interesting. I often help my parents. I feed the horses, cows, chickens, and pigs. My best friend is Brian. He's tall and thin, and he's very nice. In our free time, we like go into the cinema or watch football matches of Dandy United. He loves watching football matches. What about you? I'm sure that you have a favorite football team. Maybe Real Madrid, Barcelona, or whatever. <laughs> okay. Now, let's do some questions. Let's answer this one. Are these statements true or false? Steve lives in Edinburgh. It's true. Yeah. Number two, he doesn't like Dundee. Of course, Dundee is a city, uh, is a football team, I'm sorry. False. He loves Dundee United. He finishes school at 12. Yes, that's true. He has got many friends. False. He has only one friend. His friend is tall and slim and nice. Now I want you to answer these questions about the text. What are Stephen's favorite subjects? We said that he loves what? Yes. Exactly, science and art. Number two. Who is Stephen's best friend and how is he? Yeah. Brian. He's tall, thin, and very nice. What do they usually do in their free time? They like going to the cinema or watch football matches of Dandy United. How does Stephen help his parents? He often feeds the horses, cows, and pigs. Okay? 
Now let's move to writing. Now that we have read the text about Stephen, I want you to try to write a text that looks like it. Use Stephen's text as a model and write a paragraph about yourself. These questions may help you. First, write your name, age, occupation, city, your school and favorite school subjects, what you do after school. Easy, isn't it? Just have a look at the text of Stephen, right? Do you want to have a look at another sample? Here we go. This is about Rachel. Look, my name is Rachel. I'm from Peru. I'm 16 years old and I go to a public high school for girls. I like all my school subjects. I'm very careful about what I eat. I always have breakfast at home. I usually eat vegetables and cereals with milk. At about 12 o'clock, I have lunch at the canteen. In the evening, I have dinner with my family. We often have fish or chicken with vegetables. After school, I go home and do my homework. Then I watch TV. I usually watch soap operas and the news. But I really love watching documentaries. I love animals, so I really like knowing all about them. So please try to write a paragraph that looks like this one. Thank you very much. See you next time. You're a great student. Goodbye.